Good day, Yoga people. This is Stephen Jane coming to you live from Simha Yoga Lab in Jersey City, New Jersey. Please visit my website, simhayoga.com, for the full streaming schedule as well as my payment information for Venmo and for PayPal. My preferred way of payment is through Venmo, and the handle is Simha Yoga Lab. And four digit ID code is 8096 if you're prompted for it. Classes are $10, and if you're having a difficult time right now, $5 is fine. Please do the best you can. Also, please share with your friends that I am streaming on Instagram and on Facebook, and then uh, the videos are then um, saved onto the library. I also have a YouTube channel, Simple Yoga Lab, and the quality of the audio and video is a little bit better there. So if you're having a shaky time with your Facebook and Instagram feeds, um, I'm sorry, um, streams, you can always um, go to my YouTube channel. Also, you're not streaming with me, right? Remember, everything is saved, right? You don't have to stream with me. If you choose to practice at a completely different time, that is fine. Um, all the videos are then um, uploaded on all the different platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So take any time, please share with your friends. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so please let people know that it is happening. Okay, today's class is basics. For those of you who are tighter around the hips or your lower back, elevation is important. It'll make it a lot easier for you to take cross leg position. So you can sit on a block, you can sit on a blanket or a towel. Okay. Sitting up tall, palms face up. Now for those of you who are new to my practice, welcome. If you have any kind of special uh, conditions, injuries, or limitations, be very mindful to pull back as you need if I'm going too far or a little bit out of your range, right? Always modify and take it easy. Don't push anything, don't overdo anything. Try not to hurt yourself, right? Really important for us to be mindful about our level of practice and then uh, to make appropriate adjustments as we need. Okay? Palm space up. And with your fingers in Gyan Mudra, eyes in. Uh, come to close and lips are touching. Regulating your breath by breathing only through your nose. <clears throat> Connecting to the breath and letting the inhales even out with your exhales. Three almost together. Side. 
chin toward the right shoulder. Release back to center, drop the right hand, left ear to the left shoulder, left hand to the right side. And then the chin toward the left shoulder. Release back to center, drop the left hand, chin toward the chest. Big circles with the head in one direction. Ear to one side, roll back, opposite side, lower center. A few more rounds at jump pace. Take the chin back to center and pause. Opposite direction. And then back to center again. Lift the chin parallel to the floor and reach your spine. Coming up the locks. Extend the legs forward, separating the feet. And supporting to either side and turn your toes toward each other and then roll out, draw in, roll out, draw in, outer rotation, circling. Back to center, switching around. And back to center again. Cross your shins, opposite shin on top. The other crossing of the legs. So for those of you who don't cross your legs that often, right? When you do, you normally just do it in the dominant side without thinking, right? So that creates a pattern, right? So if you take it now with the opposite leg on top, you might feel a little bit awkward, right? A little bit tighter, a little bit unfamiliar. So that's perfectly normal. So what we're looking to do in our yoga practice is to treat our practice like a vacuum position. What you do to one side, you do equally to the other side to balance things out, right? So we're looking for symmetry. So initially for people, when they start practicing, they will notice all the different points of asymmetry, right? One side is going to be stronger, more flexible, and then the other side will be less um, as well. So um, make note of what those um, differences are, and then that will tell you what your non-dominant and your dominant sides are. So just make sure that you're paying attention to those things, so that every time you come back to a pose, you um, are aware uh, which is your dominant and non-dominant side. So non-dominant side, raising the arms up high, extend, exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, take it back up to center, exhale, twist to left. Back to center again. Side bend, right hand down, left arm overhead. Come back to center, other side. And then back to center again. Legs forward, forward fold. Take it back up. Soles of feet together, knees apart. So let's stick some gentle butterflies. Just open up the hips a little bit. All right, and then take the left hand down. Gently press your right thigh away. So you're getting a little bit more stretch in the inner right thigh, hip crease, um, and the hip joint in general, as well as the groins. Come back to center, switch sides, right hand down, press your inner left thigh gently away. And then back to center again. Again, grab the, um, both your ankles, inhale, lengthen, exhale, start to take it forward into a forward fold. Now, if you can press your elbows to your inner thighs, that will give you a little bit more hip opening. Take it back up, extend the legs forward, separate your feet um, a lot wider than your hips, uh, max width, sorry. So uh, let's go about double the width of your mat. Left hand to the floor, right arm is up, reach your right hand forward. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, tip forward. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, tip forward as you stretch to your left a little bit, rotate to your left a little bit. Come back up. 
Twist a little bit more and stretch out a little bit more. Back to center. One more round of that. Reach straight forward. Come back to center. Rotate your left a little bit. Reach out. Back to center. Rotate a little bit more. Reach out. Back to center. Other side. Right hand down. Left arm up and forward. Inhale here. Exhale. Reach forward. Inhale back up to vertical. Twist to the right a little bit. Reach forward. Inhale back to center. Twist right even more. Reach forward. One more round. Back to center. Reach straight forward. Back to center. Slightly to twist to right and reach. Back to center. Twist even further to the right and reach. Back to center. Both hands to the floor. Fingertips rotate back. Hands to the floor supporting. Draw the shoulders open. Lengthen. Exhale. Slowly reach forward. Inhale, come back up to vertical. So same thing here. Exhale, slowly reach forward a little bit further. Inhale, back up one more time. Exhale, reach even further forward and hold. Now once you adjust to that forward bend, if you're looking for a little bit more, you can walk your hands forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, start crawling. The hands further forward. Take it to your deepest, but move incrementally. Take the time to move forward. Walk your hands back in. Extend the arms out. Inhale here. Exhale, twist left. Five times. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, center. Exhale, four. Inhale, center. Exhale, five. Back to center, other side. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, center. Exhale, three. Inhale, center. Exhale, four. Inhale, center. Exhale, five. Back to center, arms forward. Exhale, forward, five times. Inhale, center. Exhale, forward. Inhale, center. Exhale, forward. Inhale, center. Exhale, forward. Inhale, center. One more. Exhale, forward. Inhale, center. Left hand down, right arm up. And this time, reach forward to grab the inside of the left foot. Relengthen the spine. Remeasure out with the neutral spine. Exhale, take it further forward. Take it back up, switch sides, left arm up on the inhale. Exhale, slightly rotate right, reach forward for the inside of the foot. Relengthen your spine. Exhale, take it deeper. Take it back up again. Extend the left leg forward. Sole the right foot and the left leg. Now, if your right knee is way high because you don't have a lot of rotation into that right hip, if you have a blanket, you can wedge the leg in so that you can still have a resistance and press down. If you have a block, you can also use a block. So either one of those are good choices. Left hand to the floor, right arm up. Make sure that the right our leg is pressing down. Exhale, reach forward to grab the inside of the foot. Take it back up. Keep the legs as they are. Come to twist to the right. Keep the twist. Side bend over the left leg. Bend your right arm over the head. Now try to keep your shoulders snappy. Now, for those of you where you don't have a lot of rotation in the spine and you're feeling like you're collapsing right through the right side, then the way to help you stack the shoulders is to take the right hand back behind you with a half bind. Now, as you keep pulling your left hand to the right leg, you also want to then counterbalance about that by leaning your torso back and then also to take the stacking more actively, stack the shoulders one over the other.
right? So rather than right arm overhead, right hand behind you, the half bind will give you a chance to rotate your shoulders a little bit more accurately. All right, take it back center. Keep the legs as they are. Count a twist to your left. Back to center again. Take the right leg, draw it back behind you. So try to get about 90 degrees here. If you're not able to take 90 degrees, you can angle the right leg forward. Um, that would take you about 45 degrees. Now, if the seated position is difficult, you have another option. You can elevate once again, sitting on a blanket, or better yet, if you have a block, you might actually be more comfortable on a block. And once you elevate it, you might actually come to that 90 degree angle. So do the best you can in terms of measuring this out. Your full objective, if you can, is to get to 90 with or without elevation. Left hand down, right arm up and fall. So this time I'll demonstrate with the block so that you can see what that looks like. Take back up, keep the legs, count the twirls to the right. And then again, side bend, right arm overhead, extended. Right, so if you don't have a lot of rotation, again, if your right shoulder is dropping down and you're beginning to face down, then better to take the right hand behind you and use your uh, resistance of the right hand behind you to stack the shoulders. So actively draw the front of the right shoulder up and back. You can even use your left arm to the inside of the left leg for resistance. So once you're stacking, you have to concentrate on the side of the head. All right, you need to take it back up. If you're elevated, you can stay elevated. If you're sitting, stay all the way down. Swing the right leg around, see the spinal twist, half variation, keep the left leg extended. Right hand behind you, left arm is up and twist to the right. Take back center, count to twist to the left. And back to center again, switch sides. Right leg extended, sole the left foot and the right thigh. Right hand to the floor, left arm is up, inner lengthen, slightly rotate to the right and reach forward to grab the foot. Relengthen the spine and exhale, take it forward. So in any of these forward folds, right, you're looking for a lengthy spine before you fold forward. What you want to avoid is grounding the back and shrugging of the shoulders, right? So you want to keep the upper back lifted and gaze slightly forward. And then with that lengthness of the spine, take it forward into the forward fold. So then you should feel a nice stretch to your lower back. Inhale, take it back up, keep the legs as they are, and twisting to the left. Ah, I forgot to point out, if you needed to wedge that leg in, right? And then a side bend, left arm overhead, reaching to the front of the room. So try to keep your shoulders stacking, right? If you're collapsing on the left side, you might take the left hand behind you to help you support, so that with the left hand behind you for resistance, you can stack the shoulders some more. Also, you need to lean the upper torso back. All right. Take back up to center, count a twist to the right. Back to center again, this time. Left heel back behind you. So if you're sitting all the way down, stay there, right? If you can, 90 degrees. If your hips are tighter, less than 90 is okay. And then finally, if you're elevating, right? Just so that I have symmetry, I'm gonna do the same on this side. All right, so roughly 90 degrees is your goal here. Right hand to floor, left arm is up and forward. Yeah. 
Inhale, back up. Exhale, come to twist to your left. Stay twisting, side bend over the right leg, left arm overhead and reach. So again, if you tend to collapse because you don't have a, a, a good amount of rotation, left hand behind you, use that resistance so that you can stack the shoulders. Also, if you want to press your right arm to the inner right leg, that might help you to stack more actively. Take it back up again, counter twist to the right. Back to center, carry your left leg over, see this final twist, keep the right leg extended. Left hand behind you, right arm up, and twist. All right, so if you elevate it, and it feels okay, stay elevated, right, as you did on the first side. If you need to come back down, adjust it. Inhale back to center. Exhale, counter twist to the right. Back to center again. Extend both legs forward, arms up, and forward fold. Now let's see if we can get a little bit deeper this time compared to the first one we did. All right, so you can grab your feet, ankles or your shins. So again, I'll give you a side view. So again, looking for lengthiness through the spine and then hinging at the hips to draw forward. Right, so avoid the rounding of the spine and the shortening of the shoulders, but instead lengthen as an openness. Take it back up, stick bridge, hands to either side as you support with your hands, slide the hands out so that you can take your lower back onto the floor. Bend your knees, step the feet in. Separate your feet about hip width with your fingertips. Feel for the back of the heels, and that's how you measure out your bridge pose. Then press your palms down, press your heels down as you lift the hips up, your lower back, your mid back. So you should be balancing by stepping on the upper back and shoulders, hips are lifting up, and your heels are grounding down strongly. Gently release your seat down, draw the knees up, grab the front of the shins and draw the knees in, in a reclined position. Then step the left back down, take the right ankle on top of the left knee. Flex your right foot in this figure four position with your legs, and then pick up the left foot, draw the left knee in. Thread the arms through the leg to grab the front of the left shin, and draw the left leg back toward you in this figure four, in this uh, angles to knee to get the hip opening. Then raise your left leg up to the sky, and then walk your hands up the left leg, lift the upper back away from the floor. So think about your heart center, your sternum, reaching upwards. Try not to draw the chin toward the chest, which overstretches the neck. Keep it neutral instead. Keep the upper back and the chest lifting upwards. All right, start to release. Step the left back down. Step the right foot back down. And then hug both knees in again. Then take the left ankle on top of the right knee. Thread the arms past your legs and then grab the front of the shin and draw back. Then extend the left leg up, walk your hands up the right leg, extend the right leg up, walk your hands up the right leg, lift the upper back away from the floor, reaching upwards through your sternum. Now try not to draw the chin toward the chest, which overstretches the back of the neck. Keep it neutral instead.
start to release, step the right back down, step the left back down, and slide the legs out. Walk your feet about mat swift distance, extend the arms overhead and reach the fingertips overhead, reach your toes away from you pointing. Then keep your left arm up, roll the feet over to the left side. So your outer left foot, inner right. Raise right arm up, lift the right shoulder blade, reach right hand over to the left side. Then grip the right fingertips to the floor, and then crawl the right fingertips at an angle to the upper right, left hand corner of the room. And then reach your right fingertips further away. Then pick up the right foot, reach your right toes back in the opposite direction. So right fingertips reaching over to the left side, um, gripping the fingertips to the floor. Right toes are off the floor and reaching back. Step the right foot back down, walk your right hand back in, lift the torso up, walk your left hand back, ground the palms, and then twist to look past your left shoulder behind you. Now keep the left hand on the floor for support. Now if your left hand is not in a supportive place, adjust it. Maybe even walk it in a little bit so that you have more support there. Now you're going to slide the right hand further out as you deepen your twist. Slide it further out, deepen your twist. All right, take it to a point where you feel like, okay, this is a really nice deep stretch, deep rotation into your mid spine. Walk your hands back in, extend the left arm back out to lower the side back to the floor, and then roll it back center. Square yourselves off, make sure you're nice and centered. Reach your right arm overhead, extend. Fingertips are reaching overhead, toes are reaching away, extend. This time I think I'll flip the other way so that you can see me again from the other direction. All right, so right arm overhead this time. Raise left arm up. Reach left hand over the right side as you lift the left shoulder blade and back off the floor. Keep extending out. You're on the outside of the right foot, inside of the left. Then grip the left fingertips to the floor and reach further out. Then start to slide the hand to the diagonal to the upper right corner of the room and reach your left fingertips way up. Then pick up the left foot, reach your left toes back in space and scissor. Right? So the left fingertips reaching way over to the upper uh, right hand corner of the room and the left toes are reaching to the lower left hand. Release your left leg back down, walk your left hand in for support, and then lift the torso up. Walk your right hand in. Find a supportive place, and then on the exhale, twist deeper. Inhale here again, exhale, twist even deeper. Keep that right hand supporting. Reach your left fingertips out and track your left arm out and twist. If you have even more, reach even further and twist even deeper. And begin to walk your left hand back in for support. Slide the right arm back out. Roll back to center, recenter yourselves. And then hug the knees in. Happy baby. So threading the arms to the inner knees to grab the outer feet. 
Your feet and your knees should be way wider than your hips. Your feet are flexed, heels are reaching up, actively kicking up with your legs, but your hands are actively pulling down. So there's an oppositional energy here. Start to release your legs, swing forward to a seated position, roll forward, and walk your feet back to your down dog and pedaling out the legs. All right, come back to stillness, we down dog. Raise your right leg up, three leg the dog. Step the right foot forward, left knee comes down, press it low. Now for those of you who have blankets or towels and need that extra padding, go ahead and take it. You want the right foot to be flat to the floor, left toes are untucked. Lunge your hips forward, walk your hands top with thighs. When you lunge your hips forward, you're getting to stretch the left quads, opening into the left hip. You want the right knee to line up over the right heel, roughly vertical, and the heel should be down. As you lunge forward, press your hands to your thighs, and then draw your belly away from the thighs. And that's the beginning of your crescent moon, as you then reach the arms up, Venus Mudra. Now, if reaching the arms up without the support of the hands is very shaky and a struggle for you, then better to take the hands to top of the thighs and concentrate on leaning of the hips forward. So this is primarily a hip opener and then adding a back bend. Freeing up your hands to reach up for some of you who don't quite have the flexibility of balance yet could be quite challenging. If that is the case, then better to support with the hands to top of the thighs. All right, let's release your hands to the floor, either side of the right foot. Tuck the back toes, shift the hips back. Now, notice the left hip, left knee lines up. I want a 90 degree angle here. And then lengthening out the right leg, inner lengthen, exhale, fold. So this is your half split. Step that right foot back down, lean forward. Walk your hands to the inside of the right foot, and then turn the right toes out 45 degrees. And the right thigh should also angle out the same way. Then left hand walks a little bit wider. So now you have a wider triangle in which you're balancing on. Then raise your right arm up. Right hand behind you, half bind to twist. Now notice that the hips, the left hip is moving straight forward. So you're getting the stretch still through the front of the left thigh. What I don't want you to do is collapse over to the left side. Right? So hips are moving straight forward. Raise your right arm up and behind you, half body, and rotating at the spine. Use the resistance of the right hand to lower back so you can draw the front of the right shoulder up and back. Let's take a side stretch. Right arm up over the right ear. Take the right hand down. Angle your torso further to the left. Now, when you angle your torso, you are not letting that right knee uh, roll in, right? You do not want to do that. You want the right knee to keep rolling out. Right? So you want to, um, the right thigh angling upwards gives you that hip opening. Now, angle the torso to the left as much as you can. If you don't have a lot of range, then maybe you're pointing a little bit further forward as opposed to further to the left. Alright? So, walking hands out a little bit, you're going to take the left forearm down. Now, if that's difficult for you, you can take the block, a book, or the blanket to your left forearm. Right? Then reach your right arm out in a position and then extend. Now that is still uh, very difficult for you. For, then stay on your hands, right? As long as you're supporting with your left hand down and then actively reaching your right fingertips a little bit further forward, that's all you're looking for. 
that will give you a, a deeper right side stretch from the right fingertips to the right arm, right shoulder, right side ribs. Now, keep remembering the right thigh angles away from you. So you're actually in a V position, right? Right thigh, right foot angles to the right, the torso and the arms angle to your left. All right, walk it back to center. Turn the right toes back forward. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. This time, full pyramid. Hands support to either side, lengthening out the front leg and fold forward. Then bend the front knee, ground the back heel, come up. Warrior one, open it up, warrior two. Lengthen out the right leg, triangle, tip the left tip back, reach your right hand forward. The right hand can go top, uh, to the top of the shins if you're less flexible. You can always slide the right hand further down for support, or you can take the right hand directly to the floor. Stack shoulders, left arm up, triangle. Now take the gaze to the floor for balance, bend your right knee. Now if you can keep the right hand on the floor, um, then go ahead and keep it there for side angle. If you are on the shins, right, you might need to slide the hand, bend your right knee, and then take the right arm to top the shin, right, left arm up. So if your hips, your lower back, your hamstrings are tight, and that transition is rather tough, and you were with the right hand a little higher on the shin, that's fine. So as you bend your right knee, you can just take the arm to top the shin. Right? And you are with the hands to the floor, then you just bend your right knee and you're on the side. Inhale, take it all the way back up. Reverse, warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor, right foot stepping back, lower all the way down to the belly. Hands alongside the rib cage, elbows drawn back. Inhale, lift up, baby cobra. So your belly and your ribs are on the floor. On the exhale, lower almost all the way down. Inhale, lift up a little higher. So this time your belly and your ribs away from the floor. Exhale, lower almost all the way down. Inhale, lift up even higher. Maybe full extension of your arms. Of course, if you need to keep your elbows bent, stay with the elbows bent. Just lift it up as high as you can. On the exhale, lower all the way down. Child's pose. Draw the seat toward the heels. And fold forward. Lift up. Take it back to your down dog. Inhale, left heel up, three leg down. Step the left foot between the hands, right knee comes down, crescent moon. Extra padding to your right knee if you need it. And then lunging forward to get into stretching the right quads, right hip. Line up the left knee over the left heel, and then walk your hands to the thighs. As you lunge forward, then press your hands to top the thighs and lean down the torso back. You may remain here for the full duration of the pose, or hands up, Venus Mudra. Concentration is with the hips moving forward, so you're getting into your quad stretch, your hip opener. Then, if you're taking the back bend, you can take the hands, pressing against your thighs, and working on the back bend, or unsupported with your arms up. So this is the full expression of your pose, the crescent moon, Kapyasana. Beginning to release, tuck the right toes under, shift your hips over your right knee, vertical line, flex your left foot, stretch your back on the left leg, and then inhale, supporting with your, both hands, lengthen your spine, exhale, take it forward, forward, forward. And step the left back 
down. Turn the left toes out, left side turns out as well. Right hand walks a little bit wider, so now you have a wider triangle to balance on. Raise your left arm up and behind you, half bind to twist. Okay, so remember, left foot, left thigh angles out to the side. Then raise your left arm up and over the left ear, left side stretch. Take the left hand to the floor. Keep the left knee, left thigh angling out to the left side. With the hands and the torso angle to the right. Take the right forearm down. You can again take the forearm to a block or a blanket. Either is fine. And then extending the left arm out to the right side. So now your left arm, left shoulder, left um, ribs are getting lengthiness and openness. As you open up the left thigh to the left side, you're also opening the uh, inner left hip. So in opposition, they're working. Begin to take it back in, walk it back to center. Turn the left toes back forward, frame your left foot, tuck the back toes, lift into your left hamstring stretch. Pyramid. Bend the front knee, ground the back heel. Take it up. Warrior one. Open it up. Warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, side angle. So you can pop. Sorry. We took triangle first. Sorry. Come back up. Lengthen out the left leg, triangle. Tip the right hip back and reach the left hand forward. Left hand to top of the shin. Now, if you are a little less flexible, you can always slide the left hand, left hand down a little bit more and you have more range. Until perhaps you can take a full pose, left hand all the way down, right arm up, try to get close. Alright, so this time I'm going to demonstrate the hand to the shin first. Alright, so from the triangle, take the gaze to the floor. Bend your left knee for side angle. Then you're going to transition with the left arm to have the left leg. Right arm up, that's your side angle. If you took a triangle with the left hand to the floor, then you're bending your left knee, and that takes you right to your side angle. Inhale, all the way back up. Reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor. Left foot stepping back, plank. And this time, lower all the way down to the belly. And you're taking Sphinx pose. Walk your hands forward. Lower your forearms down. So you want your forearms to be shoulders width. And the way to do that, to test it out, is to grab opposite elbows. Once you line that up and you release your hands, that should be roughly about your shoulders width. You also want to measure out that your shoulders and elbows roughly line up to vertical. So you want a 90 degree angle here. Once you have that, press your belly and the ribs to the floor and that will flatten your lower back. Reach your toes back in space so that will give you the extension of the legs. Now with your belly and your lower ribs pressing down, I want you to press your forearms down and lift your chest in opposition. So what that does is it deepens your mid-back bend. Then press your hands down and lift the elbows up. So this is your Bhujangasana, your Cobra. Now notice that your belly and your ribs are still pressing downwards, right? So for the most part, because your hands are so far forward and your belly is reaching down in this way, your back bend is a little bit closer to your mid-back. 
Now notice that as you then walk your hands in, as you progressively get deeper into your back bend, it's going to go down the spine. So bend the elbows, walk your left hand in about one hand crank. Walk your right hand back in to match your left. Then with the elbows bent, roll the shoulders forward, up, and as you draw back, lengthen out the arms, lift up a little higher. So notice now the back bend is slightly lower. So the further you walk your hands back, the more vertical you become, the lower the back bend. All right, so let's come in one more time. Bend the elbows first. Walk your right hand in, one hand print. Walk your left hand in, one hand print. With the elbows bent, roll the shoulders forward, up and as you draw back, lengthen out the arms, come higher up on your back bend. Bhujangasana Cobra. Begin to break, bend the elbows, lower all the way down, walk your hands back slightly, and come up into your child's pose. Go slow. All right, so you took extended deep back bends, right? And that requires for you now to come out of the pose slowly into a forward fold. Walk your hands back in, lift the torso up, keep sitting on your heels, uh, keep sitting on your shins, I mean. Raise your arms up, wrap the left arm underneath your right, so I'm facing this time. Wrap the left arm underneath your right, so you're going to match up the elbows first, then bend the elbows, press the top of the hands toward each other. If you have more mobility and can double wrap, that's your full expression of your eagle arms. Inhale, lift the elbows up, gaze up. Exhale, draw the elbows toward the ribs and round just your mid and upper back. As you round the mid and upper back, the fingertips can angle straight forward. Inhale, lift back up to back bend. Exhale, go a little bit lower in the forward fold this time. Maybe halfway down. Inhale, lift back up one more time. Exhale, draw all the way forward. Maybe your forearms touch all the way down as you bow forward. Roll back up, keep your eagle arms and twist to the right. So you're pressing your right arm against your left. Back to center, twist left. Press your left arm against your right. Back to center, release, extend the arms. Out and up. And then walk the hands back behind you, fingertips point forward. Lean back, broaden your shoulders, lift your chest, and drop the head back. Of course, again, you can look forward in this pose if your neck and your shoulders are not so flexible. Take it back to center, arms up. This time, eagle arms, wrap the right arm underneath. So match up the elbows first. Then take the top of the hands toward each other, or double wrap, and the uh, right fingers wrap around the left um, knee part behind the thumb. All right, lift the elbows up, gaze up. Round just up the back, elbows toward the ribs, and the fingertips can keep reaching forward as you round. So you should feel a nice sense of broadness through the upper back. Inhale, lift the elbows up, gaze up again. Exhale, draw forward, come maybe about halfway forward. So now it's a little bit more broad through the back or through the spine. Inhale, take it all the way back up, lift up, gaze up. Exhale, take it all the way forward. Maybe your forearms touch down. So this one is actually a little bit more restful, isn't it? Roll it back up. And twist to your left. Press your left arm against your right. 
in a back center, twist to the right. Back to center again, release your arms, reach your hands out and up. And then take the hands back behind you again, roll the fingertips back, broaden your shoulders, let the head drop back, or keep the gaze open forward, either is fine. Take it back up again, walk your hands forward, tuck the toes under, down dog, walk it out. So you were there for a while, so you might need to take a lot of pedaling off of the legs to come more into a neutral position.
Take back center again. <coughs> Hug both knees in. And then step the feet to the floor. Slide the legs forward, let the feet separate, toes turn out. Arms alongside the body, palms face up, and let it all go, Shavasana. Final relaxation. Start to reconnect to the breath, moving the fingers and the toes. Reach the arms overhead, stretching in opposite directions. And then rolling over to the right side and come up to a comfortable cross leg position. Even seat. Lengthy spine, shoulders broad, breath deep, and let the neck be free. preferred way of payment is through Venmo, and the handle is Simha Yoga Lab. Four-digit ID code, if you're prompted for it, is 8096. Classes are $10, and if you're having a difficult time right now, $5 is fine. Please share with your friends, let people know that I'm streaming on Instagram and Facebook, and then the videos are downloaded to the platforms, and then I also upload the videos into my YouTube channel, which is Simply Yoga Lab. The quality of the video and audio is a little bit better on the YouTube, but they do take a little bit more time to upload. So um, if you're not practicing with me on streaming, you can also practice through the videos at any time. So you don't have to follow my streaming schedule. All right, so thank you again, everyone. Stay safe, be well. I will see you soon. Take care.